Friday with uh, Eric Bowling on Newsmax and Mike Davis. No, no, not just Mike Davis. The Mike Davis. Article 3 Project joins us on the Newsmax Hotline. Do you believe that this case is going to wrap up uh, pretty quickly, particularly since when Michael Cohn got back on the stand, he revealed that he stole from Donald Trump today? Yeah, this Michael Cohen is just a gifting <laughs> horse uh, for President Trump. He's a convicted serial perjurer. Yeah. He's a convicted felon. He's a disbarred attorney. He testified that he embezzled money from Trump. He's changed his story many times in this matter. He's raising money on TikTok, trashing Trump, and apparently... His, his family, his wife, was going to face criminal prosecution if he didn't turn on Trump yet. This is one of the five pillars of this, this unprecedented <laughs> criminal prosecution against Trump. The other four are you have a Soros funded Manhattan DA who campaigns yes. on going after Trump, Alvin Bragg, and then you have Matthew Colangelo, the number three in the Biden Justice Department, deployed to Bragg's office to bring this bogus case after the prior Manhattan DA, the Manhattan U.S. Attorney, the Federal Election Commission, and Bragg himself, who campaigned on getting Trump, didn't think that this was a case. And so Colangelo goes up there and bring, resurrects this zombie case, and then you have this biased Democrat operative judge, Juan Mershon, who donated to Biden in 2020, donated to another anti-Trump cause, just got had just revealed that he got reprimanded by the, the, the Judicial Council for that. He still didn't recuse from this case. And then we're learning that his adult daughter, Lauren Mershon, is raising millions of dollars off of this cri unprecedented criminal tr uh, prosecution of Trump over which her father's presiding, requiring his recusal. Uh, and we also have this jury pool in Manhattan that's 87% Biden voter. And then Colangelo and Bragg and Judge Mershon further rigged the jury selection process by weeding out the three people in Manhattan who follow Trump on social media, but not <laughs> weeding out the people who follow Biden. This is such a rigged, bogus political case is lawfare, it's election interference by President Biden and these Biden Democrats. Frankly, it's a criminal conspiracy. 100%. Dan Goldman also, member of Congress, paid uh, 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 Mershon's daughter $150,000 political cult consultancy. He also coached Michael Cohn when he took the stand. We have a member of Congress who admitted he coached Michael Cohn. So this ties the Democrat Party to this. This is a massive criminal conspiracy. Uh, what do you suppose? I mean, let, let's get back to just what's happening this week. Right now, Mershon is looking at a couple of things. A, instructing this jury, trying to get a guilty verdict on one of those, while everybody who's worth their salt in punditry and, uh, and, and lawyering uh, are saying this is a travesty of justice. So uh, he's got the, I can do this, which will make me look like the man who brought down Donald Trump, but my career as a jurist is put into question because everybody knows I'm nothing but a partisan hack. Do you suppose any of those things are weighing on this judge's mind as he continues to pursue this absurd case? I think what's probably weighing more on Judge Juan Bershon's mind is that if he does not deliver a conviction for Biden and these Democrats, his daughter Lauren Michon's career is destroyed. She is a leading Democrat campaign consultant and fundraiser for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and Adam Schiff and Senate Democrats and the DNC. Uh, her career is done if Juan Mershon does not deliver, and he knows that, right? That's why he must recuse from this case under New York statute. He has, his daughter has a clear financial interest in this case. She's raising millions of dollars off this case. She gets a percentage of that, right? This isn't, isn't just crazy Mike Davis saying that she must recuse. A former federal Clinton judge from New York City went on Caitlin Collins' show on CNN on April 5th and said that Judge Juan Mershon must recuse under New York statutes, which requires recusal for up to six degrees of separation. A judge's daughter is in the first degree 
of separation. He clearly needs to recuse. Instead of recusing, what did he do? He punished, he retaliated against President Trump for raising this recusal issue by expanding his illegal, unconstitutional gag order on Trump, right? Threatening Trump, saying, if you mention Michael Cole, or Matthew Colangelo, if you mention Lauren Mashon, if you even respond and mention Stormy Daniels or Michael Cohen or even the fact that the Manhattan jury pool voted 87% for Joe Biden, if you mention those things, if your campaign mentions those things, if you or your campaign even post a New York Times story mentioning, mentioning any of those five things, this Judge Bershon is threatening to throw Trump in jail. This is absolutely third world banana republic nonsense. This is what you would do in third world Marxist hellholes like North Korea or Zimbabwe, but it's happening now in places like New York, New York, D.C. and Atlanta. This is part of the Biden Democrats' illegal lawfare and election interference. It is a criminal conspiracy. What's going to happen this week with regard to this case? Um, I want to get to the other cases, the Fonnie Willis case. I want to get to the uh, to the classified documents case, which is off the rails. It sounds like Jack Smith's in a whole lot of trouble. But what do you suppose is going to happen this week, Mike Davis? If if there is any semblance of justice in New York, which there's not, there's no question that this jury would find Trump not guilty because even if you look at the credibility of these witnesses and this evidence, there is no chance that there is evidence beyond a reasonable doubt to find Trump guilty. There's not evidence at all to find Trump guilty. They have not even told President Trump what the legal allegations against uh, they haven't even said what the legal allegations are in this case trump doesn't even know against what legal allegations he must defend in week six of his unprecedented trial they have not told him the legal allegations so not only should this jury find him not guilty even if the jury finds him guilty the judge should not convict him because they don't know what the legal allegations are and here's the bottom line even if everything they alleged against trump is true that he settled a nuisance claim and put it in his private books as a legal expense? What the hell else would you call the settlement of a legal claim other than a legal expense? I've been a lawyer for almost 20 years. I'd be in prison now because this is how you book legal expenses. So they, tr Trump settles and books this in his private books as a legal expense in 2017 and somehow that affected the presidential campaign in 2016, and somehow what would be a bookkeeping misdemeanor, it's not because a legal expense is a legal expense. But somehow, even if that were some, some kind of a bookkeeping misdemeanor in New York in 2017, we're long beyond the statute of limitations. This misdemeanor claim would be time barred, but somehow they've taken that time board misdemeanor bookkeeping violation, which it's not, but let's just play along, and they've transformed this into 34 felonies against Trump, but they can't explain to Trump how or why those bookkeeping mis misdemeanors became felonies, because they have not told him what the legal allegations are. I've never seen anything like this, to be honest. I, I Mike Davis, I, I think that... Um what we're witnessing here is uh, is failing, first of all, thank God. Uh, second of all, I think it has uh, exposed um, the the uh, limits to which, well, I should, the lack of limits to which the Democrat Party will go to a bastardized judicial system to go after a political opponent. I, for one, am, am grateful that this has been exposed. It is a tragic uh, moment in American history that we have to witness this, but I'm glad it's there and I'm hoping that eventually that that there will be some hell to pay with regard to this what would you like to see happen to uh, to the, the the DOJ the FBI uh, the New York bar the the Georgia bar uh, you know the DC bar what would you like to see happen I mean I want to see head ro heads roll for this I want to see people go to jail for this and, it, and this is bigger than Watergate ever dreamed of being but what do you hope comes out of this eventually Mike well, I'll tell you this, that there, uh, if they can do this to a billionaire former and likely future president, just imagine what they can do to the rest of us. Trump is simply 
in their way. These are not liberals who love America. These are leftists who hate America. They're, they're Marxists. They don't believe in due process. They believe in politicized and weaponized justice. They don't believe in equality. They believe in equity. They don't believe in free speech. They believe in censorship. These are leftists. These are Marxists. And these people need to be destroyed politically, legally, and financially. So uh, President Trump needs to win back the White House on November 5th, 2024, and starting on January 20th, 2025. These these people who are engaging in this obvious criminal conspiracy against President Trump, his top aides like Steve Bannon and Peter Navarro, his attorneys like John Eastman and Jeff Clark and his supporters on January 6th, these co-conspirators, again, must face the most severe legal, political, and financial consequences because they are trying they have politicized and weaponized our law enforcement and intel agencies to destroy their political enemies, and that is unacceptable. That is how you destroy our country. This is how the Roman Republic fell. This, it, was the, it was the lawfare by the Roman insiders against Caesar that forced him to cross the Rubicon from Gaul into Rome, which led to the Civil War and led to the fall of the Roman Republic. I'm not saying we're heading into a civil war, but this is going to lead to a legal tit-for-tat between the parties that it's going to destroy our country. And so this needs to end. We need to give them a very powerful dose of their own medicine starting on January 20th, 2025, so this never happens again. Absolutely. The other two cases, real quick, essentially dead, certainly before November. Fonnie Willis, uh, Trump had a legal victory last week. They're going to hear the possibility of having her tossed. This whole, uh, this whole, uh, uh, Jack Smith classified documents is, is off indefinitely because it looks like they planted evidence. It looks like that Jack Smith shouldn't have never been appointed. Those two cases are cooked, essentially, right? For now. Yeah, Big Fanny. Big Fanny's in big trouble with Georgia because she hired her dumb, unqualified boyfriend who built $700,000 and she took the illegal kickbacks in the form of these lavish trips. This Judge Scott McAfee down in Fulton County is a little coward. He's fearful of getting uh, elected, so he punted, and the, the Court of Appeals is stepping in and saying, no, 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 this whole office, this whole Fulton County DA's office is going to be disqualified. And once that happens, that case is going to go away. The uh, Jack Smith case is in, in D.C. and the espion, the, the bogus espionage case, the presidential records case, those are going to, those are not going to get resolved before the election. And so Trump's going to get elected and his attorney general, his acting attorney general on day one will motion the court to dismiss those cases with prejudice. And then he'll, that acting attorney general should also open a criminal probe at the same time on these, on Biden and these Democrats who have run this republic ending unprecedented welfare and election interference against Trump, his top aides, his lawyers and his supporters. All right, man. Well, I appreciate you, Mike. I really enjoy when you talk to Ben, and you guys just knock it out of the ballpark every time, and I really appreciate you joining me. Have a great week. I think good news.